my hair like severely shortened so I have very short hair now um, that is not properly styled so I'm going to be wearing this cool hat today so in any case hello and welcome back to the punky show or the punky rooster live stream or whatever this is and whatever it becomes I'm continuing with the format using my cool new recording studio which is basically a small little uh, corner of my back back room with a green screen and a webcam and I feel like vaguely professional now but in any case I want to give you as always an uh, update about what's going on um, what will be going on and what has been going on is that all three tenses I think so I think we're all set and I'm happy to report that I have added to my setup so I now have a separate monitor which is actually an old flat screen computer like a little smaller one but I can actually have your chats easily accessible so I don't need to like have it on screen with me while I'm kind of like doing this sort of thing so so um yeah so let's talk about it so this is so I'm going to start by talking about two plants that I actually started in hydroponics in the the setup that is actually now right behind me on the other side of the screen screen that's my um the cabinet that I turned into a grow cabinet, <laughs> the old uh, shelving in, in cabinetry that I basically lined with reflective insulation and installed a bunch of harvest uh, hidden harvest grow lights. And it's been a pretty decent growing situation. I grew a whole bunch of peppers in there. Right now I'm experimenting with kale, but it's going OK. But I think my I think I don't think. I think I don't think. <laughs> I think there's something wrong with the the uh, nutrient solution that I use. Like I don't think I mixed it right or something because I'm not really getting ex exciting growth as I have come to expect from from DWC. So I'm probably gonna back off on this. I don't know. We'll see in the future. Tulosibe, I think you might be in the wrong place, Yanmo. But hey, thanks for joining us. So today I'm mostly talking about gardening. Um, if you're talking about referencing perfectly legal and normal gourmet mushrooms, um, that's a little bit on hold until the colder months. I'm just chilling out on that because uh, back here is not great temperature for me to be growing mushrooms of any sorts. So wink, wink, nudge, nudge. So it's um, we're going to be talking mostly about gardening today and plans for that. So, um, so anyway, so that's set up, I, you know, I think there's something, the kale isn't really taking off like I would expect it to, but, um, you know, we'll see. I might give it another shot, but it may conflict with what I might be doing out in the greenhouse. And that's kind of like the big topic of today is to talk about my plans for growing in the winter. I think I might have a good solution for maintaining the heat levels in there. And we'll get to that in a second. But before we get talk about that, we've had... But our weather is now hot again or hot ish, but it was like, so this season has been weird. I talk about it every live stream. We got hard frost. <laughs> then we had a lot of heat, sudden frost at the beginning of the season. And then after that, it's been like boiling drought and temperatures and everything else. And then suddenly it dropped again for a little while, causing the damage you see on the screen right now to my cucumelon, my, uh, sour gherkin my african sour gherkin but now it's gone up to like 80s again so i don't know the weather's all over the place but every plant both wild and cultivated has basically given up on the season everything's dying back and any hint of cold is just is kicking plants butt so this actually happened on a cold night particularly cold night we had it did not reach freezing or frost temperatures but it's still had a frost like a fat this cucamelon was just like eh, i'm good um this is one of the plants i started in the, the hydroponics and transferred outside you might remember that past video where i talked about transferring things from hydroponics to soil and it actually did pretty good once the heat of the season and the drought overcame uh it's passed like the really worst part of it it started taking off again and i actually got tons of little cucamelons and they're really delicious and i came to the conclusion that I bought, you know, I grew this as like, just kind of like a, a lark, you know, it was a, just kind of like a fun thing to do. You know, I get obsessed with growing these, these kooky, corny, you know, uh, um, novelty, novelty fruits and vegetables. But, um, 
Hey, DM222, what's going on? So, you know, I get into this 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 thing of growing these kind of like weird stuff because, you know, it's weird and it's cool and why not? But it ends up being things that I don't really use or I don't, that are not probably the best thing for me to grow, to, to spend my time, money, and energy on. So every, every passing year, I try to like, kind of like, um, pare down and carve out these kind of like things is try to get back to the basics closer and closer to zeroing in on what is basics in general but basics for me and the kind of food that I will eat and my family will eat and um you know we don't really eat cucumbers but but I enjoyed these these cucamelons so much this may become the replacement in my garden instead of cucumbers because I could see a setup where I grow some corn or other tall plant, or, or maybe I just have, you know, a more traditional just sort of built structure, like a trellis. But I could grow these suckers up out of a pot, and I think they'd do fantastic. And it would basically be like having like a, a berry-sized uh, cucumber. And I think that would be really cool. Like, the rest of my family didn't like them, but still just be me enjoying these little little bits but they were really tasty and i did like them they do have like that a strange slightly sour they're called sour gherkins in some places and they do have a slight slight sour but to me it doesn't come off as like sour gross it comes off as lemony like it hits me as like a citrus tone um so they were really good i've been gobbling them up and they're the plant's still putting on stuff despite having taken that damage it's still like putting out like you can see tons of them like behind my hand and everything so this got overgrown and started growing into my asparagus. So they're aggressive little vines once they get going. So I'm I'm all about them. So like I think this might become the cucumber. Like I don't bother growing cucumbers because it's like you end up getting like a ton of cucumbers. And I'm like, when am I going to use all the cucumbers? You know, so but I think this could be it. Like it's a cucumber that is that eats like a berry. And I think that's pretty cool. So this may very well become a, a, a standard addition to my garden. The other thing is peanuts, which is not something I thought I would ever say, ever. I didn't expect to be able to grow peanuts. Peanuts has always been kind of like a, a an alien thing for a northern grower. Like I can't possibly grow peanuts. But yet the other plant that I had grown, let me skip back around here. So much to talk about today. This is actually a peanut plant. Now it's looking pretty sad right now. And this is the peanut plant I started in my hydroponics indoors. And it it looks sad now, but it did do pretty well. Like again, during the hottest part, which is weird because I expected peanuts to love it. But um, this is the Tennessee red peanut, if I remember correctly. And I was shocked to discover that there were peanuts in the soil. Like it blew me away. Like. That's what you come to expect when you're planting peanuts. That's what they do. They put peanuts in the soil. But I expected it to be a failure. I figured the plant might grow, but I figured our season wasn't nearly as long, long enough. And it still might not be for a great harvest. I have not dug it up yet. I considered doing that before this video to show you guys. But I'm like, you know what? I'm going to let it go for as long as I can. Why not? Um, but if this, I did see peanuts. And this is just a, a quick photo of one of them. So I brushed them aside like potatoes and I, and I saw a peanut. So a few peanuts so i'm like wow they're actually it's actually working it's actually working so um maybe i can grow peanuts in the north the cold north here now in all fairness i'm in a slightly warmer zone than i was at my previous property the 17 acres that was more in like zone five closer to zone four because we were up at a higher elevation and this is um you know this is zone six solidly and i've noted that some sites are starting to call it zone seven which seems insane. I don't know if that's due to like just, you know, climate shifts or whatever, but hey, if if it means that I have a long enough season to pull this off, that's awesome. So I'm excited about that. Probably in the next week or so, I will actually pull up the plant and see what kind of harvest we get. Because even because I haven't really done anything with this plant. I haven't really babied it or tended to it for the most part. So if I get if it is able to produce peanuts with that i don't know maybe peanuts has to be part of my thing because i love peanuts um let's see here so what shall we talk about oh i just wanted to share this so this some animal eat the top off this um uh, sunflower my sunflowers do terrible my even my clumps of of jerusalem artichokes the art uh, the they they're not looking fantastic either the sun chokes 
Um, they're doing okay, but they're not really spreading out this this first year. But in a lot of cases, they, they, it's kind of their first year, so I should probably give them be a little chill. Um, but they haven't put on flowers yet, but we'll see later this fall. I know it happens it's pretty late in the season. But anyway, so this is a more standard. I think this is like technically a gray mammoth or something variety. Um, some critter bit the head off and it actually put out a whole bunch of new buds, which I thought was really cool. So it was like topped and it produced a lot more little buds and little flowers. So I just wanted to share that. Oh, and speaking of effing animals, it probably was a squirrel because they always attack. I went out this morning and found this. This is my hazelnut, one of my hazelnut trees, bushes, and it was loaded with hazelnuts. I go out there, not a single gosh darn hazelnut on this entire bush, and I found that on the ground, all eaten up. So I knew, I knew, I had been told, I had, I had read that hazelnuts just don't survive the wildlife onslaught. Like, they're magnets for all sorts of critters, like especially squirrels. So I was not thrilled about this because I wanted one of those. I wanted several of those, if nothing else, than to plant them and get more plants started, you know, from seed. So this was going to be one of my um, projects through the winter, but I, but not really because you really need to let the hazelnuts, you know, settle and, and just kind of uh, chill over winter for them to, to, um, uh, sprout. There we go. Sorry, I'm a little, need another, another cup of coffee. So I was, but I was so looking forward to like doing that and doing that project that um, when I saw this this morning, I was so annoyed. And the first thing I thought is, Annie, get your gun. I'm going to go out to my shed. I'm going to get my air rifle and we're going to have some squirrel hunting like we used to do. Can't really do that in suburbia, but I kind of want to do it kind of want to do it because I'm pretty upset at these squirrels. I have that trap still, so I may have to do that. Um, but in any case, we have tons of them, so a few around my property will not be missed. So ta just talking about what's going on too in the season, my chickens just stopped laying eggs and I'm like, what's their problem? And then one day the yard was just, just exploded in feathers. You can see it in the background. All those little white spots are feathers, feathers, feathers. And I just took a picture of a few more feathers. It's like the chickens just went kapow, everywhere. Like not just like in their pen, but my entire backyard is just feathers everywhere. Like when when we first went out of the house and saw this, the day it happened, we were like, oh my God, something killed one of the chickens. And we were like really, really concerned. But as it turns out, it it is just molting. Cause that, I mean, that explains why they weren't really, really like laying eggs. And the white chicken in particular that I have, the Easter egger, I mean, seriously, just all the, <laughs> It's not like it's pecked out, it's being picked on, because it's actually kind of the bully of the group. But it's like at the top of the pecking order, but it just like exploded. All its feathers just went flying off. It's like something out of a, a Foghorn Leghorn cartoon. Um, and I think some of these feathers are down feathers from the other chickens as well. They don't look quite as ratty, but yeah. So, you know, it's just that time of the season. The funny thing was, I don't remember this happening uh, last fall. Like I understand that molting in fall happens and you know, and also in spring, you know, when those temperatures change, but I've never, I guess it just wasn't so sudden. Like I'm not used to seeing it like so suddenly such a difference. So it was, just, it's just hilarious. It's just so weird. But in any case, there's a the little chicken creatures. Um, they're doing good. Nothing much to say about them. Um, you can see actually, well, I'm, I have tried off and on. You might've seen the video where I created that ladder. I think I called it a chicken ladder. So that my dog, so I could keep my the gate open off to the left here. You see the gate. Keep this gate open. And I would put that fence, uh, excuse me, that ladder there. Because I didn't think the dog would be able to climb up that steep in that. I mean, it was basically just fencing. Just fencing like this, used as like a ladder. Um, but it didn't matter. The dog learned, the dog just so wants to get in the chicken coop and eat the chickens, like the, the kitchen scraps, that it figured out a way to get up there. Um, I then was like, ah, I, I was like out of ideas. So I'm like, I cut a hole here in the fence and I bent it down so I can bring it back up and close it up if I don't want the chickens to get out. And I put a bar here just to give them a visual clue. And now they can get theoretically get in and out as much as they want. But I have noticed they don't go out in as much, out and in as much 
uh, as much, but that's fine. I mean, because, you know, there's only so much chicken crap we can deal with in the backyard anyway. So um, anyway, that's pretty much the update for the chickens. So I want to talk a little bit about the onions and garlic, because this not only ties into this past year's garden, but plans for future garden things. So when I, so my garden, har my garlic harvest was not fantastic. I planted out a bunch. Um, these are ones I started over the winter. Um, the, the drought really got to them and they kind of died off like mid season. So the bulbs were not very great. And they also did not, they did not preserve very well because they were small. So a lot of them just kind of like rotted and got smushy. But um, I took them all and I put them out. I laid them out. They're kind of bunched up in this photo, but I, I, t I laid them on this, this, I have this like, I don't know what it goes to, but I have this like old screen door insert, but it makes for perfect aeration, like the airflow around. So you try to avoid too much um, uh, mold because you want to keep your, your bulbs apart as they dry and you want that airflow. And I actually stuck this up into the rafters of our small shed and it was perfect. It just like, it probably could have it would have done better outside to be quite honest. Hey, great sky troll, what's going on? I'm doing broccoli, lots of broccoli, good choice. I'm all about the kale right now. So part of the Brassica family, woo. So that is team Brassica. Um, so the airflow going through, you know, it keeps the mold off, etc., etc. But bigger bulbs are just better for storage and everything else. So I let these cure and um, also the onions too. So my onion harvest was similarly kind of eh. I had some good ones, I had some bad ones. I was like, I'm not even gonna eat them right away. So I took both the garlic and the, let's see here, both the garlic. And this just shows right here that I removed the squishy ones. Anything that wasn't firm, like nicely firm for both the onions and the garlic, toss it aside because they're not good for saving. And the rest I cleaned up and I put in a cardboard box with some paper that I wrapped around. Then you can see some garlic. The garlic's mostly on the bottom, so you can't see a lot of it. You can see a few bulbs. And honestly, I'm thinking about just using this as as seed garlic for next year. Now, whether or not I grow start them in my greenhouse, and, and hopefully we'll have nice bigger bulbs and bigger everything next year. Gonna try bok choy. Definitely try bok choy. It grows very small. It's very compact, so you can usually grow a lot of it. At least in the varieties that I've had. I mean, there might be some that are bigger, so I shouldn't say they're all small, but. Again, brassicas, can't beat them. They grow in the cold and they're the most nutrient dense foods in the world. So, so yeah, so I'm basically, right now I'm trying to think, okay, I'm pretty convinced that I'm gonna use, I mean, some of these bulbs are kind of big, so it's gonna be pretty big bulb. Some they might just end up flowering next year. I don't know if the bulbs are getting bigger, but we'll see. Um, I mean, we'll see, we'll see. There, I don't think there's gonna be a lot of harm in that. And, so I, um, so I, I don't know exactly what I'm going to, going to do though, because I'm either going to, I'm either going to start the bulbs, like go ahead and get them in the greenhouse, grow them over the greenhouse, or just wait and get them started. Um, I don't know if I want to plant them out in the, the pots ahead of time, because I'm still not sure hundred percent with what I'm going to do with all the pots for next year. Cause I'm thinking about doing a companion gardening situation. Um, so I really don't know. And, and honestly, our season's gotten so long and these are already got a head start. I'm considering on just trying to keep them uh, happy and dry and preserved through the winter and then just plant them early, just plant them out there early, uh, early uh, spring, very early spring, um, which is not typically what you do with garlic. I mean, it's typical with what you do with onions here, but um, typically not with garlic. But then again, you know, I started the garlic early and then it wasn't fantastic, so. I think it'll be fine. So let's go back through. Um, also related to things that I'm thinking about doing for over the winter are propagating the two berries that I most like to eat and my family most like to eat, which is strawberries and the blackberries. Now I talked about in past videos how I'm doing essentially kind of like air layering for blackberries, but let's be honest, blackberries are one of those plants that just root very, very easily. So this is the same air layering technique where it's a plastic bag cut open and it was uh, stuffed with coconut coir, sliced open, wrapped around the stem. I put in, I just used painter's tape to hold it in place. Then I wrapped him fully around it just to protect a little bit more, give it some dark. 
and we should see some roots growing in here eventually. It's not quite there yet. There might be some small roots, but I haven't, until I see them poking against the sides, I'm not going to cut them off from the main branch. But my hope is to get like, um, I don't know, a half dozen plants started, grow them all through winter in the greenhouse. Um, and, and then, you know, probably if they grow big enough, clone those too and make multiples, multiples, and create as many of these plants as I can, as many clones as I can to start filling in spaces in my berry bushes and whatnot. I lost all my onions this season. It was a bit too wet. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I had the exact opposite problem. It was drought, drought, drought. So I can empathize from the complete opposite end of the spectrum. But so that's, that's one thing. So let's talk about the greenhouse. It's currently a mess. I have a bunch of random stuff lying around I need to clean up. This was a, the cracky kale experiment. It kind of got overrun by um, cabbage worms and died off in the hot sun. But I was ignoring it for the most part, so that's my fault. I actually ended up bringing all these rails and putting them outside because we're going to get some rain soon. And they'll help wash off these rails because I got really disgusted with um, caterpillar poop, basically. Um, cabbage worm poop. And, but, because I don't know if I'm going to try the rails. Because I don't know, would Cracky, one, okay, first of all, I think the kale would have worked better. I mean, it did fine. It did fine. But I think kale needs a little bit more space. So if I do kale in these again, which I almost certainly will, um, I don't know if it'll be this winter or next spring. I'll talk about that in a moment. But I would probably, right now I have, um, you know, I have all these different, I think I have like eight or nine holes per tube, per rail. And I think I would, just to save some space, I would probably skip every other hole and just put kale in. So they have more space to grow and more water to kind of like grow out in. Just to, because lettuce, you could put lettuce in each of those spots and they'd be fine. But lettuce was more content being crowded. But I think the kale wants a little bit more space to like grow more effectively. But um, that's an experiment, really. That's still an experiment just to have cracky kale. So I may still have these, but for them for now, I've moved all the rails outside to kind of get envision what I want to do inside. Now you can see here that these these rail uh, shelves, I guess you would call them, I've built to put these these rails on, but they're not they're not like flat surfaces. You can see that they, I have a few boards going across, so these don't sag because this is the whole tops open and. You can see a little bit better at the bottom, these little cross beams. And these cross beams aren't close enough for me to start putting pots there. Now they are spaced enough that I could put, I could put big pots, some of my 20 gallon pots from outside. I can move them indoors, have them under here, not on top, but I'll explain why. And I'll probably do some on this side or smaller pots. Maybe I'll put the 10 gallon smaller pots. I don't know. I gotta really, I gotta clean up the greenhouse and like lay this all out to figure out for sure. But um, I am gonna have some pots right here and at least pots underneath. And here's why. So heating a greenhouse is always a thing, all right? Always a thing in winter. And I unfortunately don't have the second layer of plastic because after I took it off, we had a windstorm that effed it up hardcore. Um, so while still, I think technically mostly in one piece, it's a, it's a disaster. And it's now become a habitat for everything under the sun so it's basically a lost cause which is fine because i didn't really want to i was going to try without having it this year um because it also you know it just uh, every layer every layer of plastic you put put on uh it does supposedly you know up a zone um it keeps a little bit more heat in but it also blocks a little bit more sun from coming in because um, it's just one more layer of material that the sunlight has to push through so i'm going to try to leave it I'm not gonna buy a, another second layer. I'm gonna leave it off because I'm not gonna buy any more plastic for the greenhouse until um, either this catastrophically, catastrophically fails and or when I expand this greenhouse because this greenhouse I built as a lean-to, but I, I'm realizing I'm gonna have plenty of space off to the side. So I'm actually thinking about bringing this out and essentially building one just like it, but the mirror image so I can have a full hoop. And after I do that, I'm going to invest in getting that two-ply, um, what are they, the two-ply plastic where you can actually blow a fan, a layer of air. What are they? I don't know if they call them air cushion or what they call them, but it's so you can blow a, a thin layer of air between it to give more insulation. So that way, hopefully, it'll keep the heat in. But for now, I'm realizing there's a, there, there's a couple big problems growing in a greenhouse in winter. One, the 
well, the, the lack, the, the escaping of the heat, but also the winter light level. There's not a lot of light. The days are very short. I'm in the north. I'm pretty far up there. So it's, the days get very, very short towards the middle of the, the winter, especially. So what I was thinking is I got these grow lights that yes, hidden harvest grow lights do not put out a lot of heat individually, but you get them, you know, a dozen of them cranking in a small space. They do heat up a space. They heat up this room that I'm in. Um, and I don't even have all of them going. I have a total of 14 of those lights, I believe now. So if I end up putting dozen of them, 14 of them out there, that's pretty intense. And what I'm thinking about doing is only putting plants on the bottom here. I keep wanting to touch my screen and point to it for you. Um, but I, I'm gonna have to use my mouse because I'm like, you can't see my screen. You can see my screen, but you can't see me pointing at my screen. So um, underneath here, what I'm thinking about doing is putting the plants, hanging all those grow lights from the top rail, not having th anything on top. Maybe, maybe I keep the rails on top. I don't know. But I also have this layer of insulated, reflex, reflective insulation, the Reflectex, the same stuff I have in my grow cabinet in the back of me right here that um, I can use this to wrap around. So whatever I'm growing in here, not only gets extra light, it gets a little bit of heat protection, but it also has a little cold protection, but it has these lights that might put off a little bit of heat and maybe heat those plants there, but also the greenhouse at large. So I think maybe this might be good and I'm gonna run them at night. So that's the other thing. So basically, as soon as the sun goes down, these lights are gonna kick on and I'll run them all night and they'll provide maybe just enough heat to keep it above um keep it above freezing so that's my thought and if i put plants along the outer edge here near the the wall kind of where my my head is beep, 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 beep. i don't have a point if you always forget my camera is the opposite so um this anyway this edge along here where i have all this garbage uh if i start putting pots here you know um, they won't be as close to the light uh, for both heat and light purposes. But, you know, maybe along here I grow kale, leafy greens, and inside there I, I do something that might benefit from a little bit more heat, a little bit more light. Still something that's cold tolerant, but maybe I grow like peas under there or something. You know, find it like a really good cold tolerant pea. Who knows what I might be able to grow. Um, hey, Albert. How you doing? Are you the same Albert from Twitch? If so, hello. Um, great Sky Troll. I use the thermal mass to balance temperatures. I'd fill drums with water and use the counter space. Georgia, not a lot of snow here. Yeah, that doesn't... Your garden did amazing the last four months. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that, Albert. Um, yeah, I can't really do that here. I've, I've proven that thermal mass doesn't mean a goddamn thing in the the cold north once you get into the winter it just it doesn't it doesn't power up high enough or hold on to it but i mean there's been criticisms of my method so i don't know maybe somebody's got it to work but the other people i've seen do it in colder parts like i think the city stead came to the same conclusion i was following that for a while i haven't been on youtube much unfortunately so i'm kind of lost touch with a lot of youtuber people these days but i know he had been doing it and i believe he ran came to the same conclusion But, um, so that's my thought for greenhouse growing. Now, again, you'll see that I don't have plastic along the back here. So that does lead to plastic, uh, excuse me, heat escaping. I've considered trying to salvage what plastic I can and put it on the back. But, um, yes. Oh, hi there, Albert. How good to see you. I wasn't sure. Yes, Punky Roo and Punky Roo Stir. So for people that don't know... I have a, a gaming and game development channel here on YouTube called under the name Punky Roo and also a Twitch channel. So if for some reason you're somebody who wants to watch me develop video games and play video games, check out Twitch, Punky Roo on Twitch. And I have some crossover. I know Pillow is often around these parts on this channel too. So um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. I think this might try, I think this might work. I'm excited. And if it doesn't work, oh well, you know, big, no big deal. But to maximize use of, I probably will try the kale again in these rails, just so I can give a roof 
basically like a roof. Um, I just gotta make sure I don't dump water because then they'll get my grow lights underneath. And uh, I think it'll be okay. So we'll have like a sort, we'll have like a heater going on at night. Because again, um, thermal mass works if you know how to use it. I figured out how to use it. Okay, well, that's good. I'm glad to hear that. In my experiments, it does not, at least not for my climate. Because um, I don't have the solar power during the winter to heat up the thermal mass to the point where it actually does anything at night. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all I had. So how's everyone doing? <laughs> I'm getting pretty good at hitting the, the 30 minute mark with these like gardening live streams. I'm realizing this hat's a little weird with the green screen because if you actually see through it, kind of does like a disappearing effect. I just cut my hair and dyed it, so. Can't really see on screen because I have the saturation down, but it's actually like a dark purple now. Um, yeah, so that's, that's, it's so awesome that you all came and joined me. I'm trying to get back into the, the doing regular um, updates. And if you're watching this after the fact, thank you so much. I've gotten a lot of views on these videos after the fact. So the people who don't like um, actually joining me for the live thing or can't are able to view it after the fact. And I think it works out really well. What climate are I in? So I'm in zone six. Um, so it's climate. So, but the climate here is very cold. So our hardiness zone is six, but we have pretty rough winters. Hey, Marlo, I was actually just about to finish up. Um, I was actually just kind of saying that um, I'm trying to get into the habit of, of live streaming when it will be. I don't know. Things life is just crazy now, but I, I'm pretty consistently live streaming on my Twitch channel, Punky Roo. So I'm getting into a habit. Once I figure out that schedule and get into, generally get better into the habit of live streaming regularly, I can figure out when to do it here. Um, I'm still aiming for midday on Sundays. Midday my time. So uh, noon or one. I think I used to do one o'clock Eastern Standard Time if I remember correctly. So more of that. And speaking. I just realized how much it messes with the color. Yeah, it's cool seeing you on here, Albert. I will perhaps see you on the other in the other place soon. But in any case, so I think I'm going to end this live stream for now. I don't want these to go too, too long. Um, I probably, again, once I get into the habit, I may set up separate time to do multiple live streams and also maybe one that's specifically for like Q&A and, and, and extensive chat. But we'll see how it goes. I did spend four years failing to utilize thermal mass properly. But once you get there, temperature regulation is much easier. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, too cold a climate. It doesn't, it does not work in, in northern climates. That's been the consensus I've seen. And a lot of people, I think, who who say it works are full of shit. So one thing I've learned about homesteading gardening on YouTube is that people just talk stuff and they perpetuate myths and because it gets clicks. So I don't know. Maybe there's people out here who do it. Well, hello there, Philly Garden American Patriot. Good afternoon. Welcome. That is a mouthful. Let's see here. Can I do an acronym? PGAP. That's almost more of a, more difficult to say. That's right. Philly Garden American Patriot. Welcome. So I'm just about to finish up. Thank you all so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. I'll be giving you an update next Sunday. And like I said, probably hopefully more, more live streams as I have this new setup and I want to utilize it. So in any case, thank you so much for watching. And as always, thank you for joining me on this journey.